Uh, my name is Alfredo Calderon, and I will be in charge of introducing the speakers, in this case, of this uh, breakout uh, session. Although we uh, will have time for questions at the end, uh, the, present the presenters will indicate to you if they would like to uh, receive questions during their presentation, but the, the way we're trying to do it is uh, uh, give them give you 10 minutes at the end of their presentation to uh, ask questions and they will answer. Uh, this presentation will be in English. Uh, simultaneous translation is available in the corresponding channel. Uh, additional headphones are available at the uh, room or the registration area for those who, who need it. Uh, we will appreciate that uh, all of you change your mobile devices or phones to vibration or silent mode in order to have your full attention uh, during this uh, session. Finally, please make sure that uh, you complete the evaluation form uh, for this session and hand it in before you leave this room. I will be uh, handing out the evaluation form and you can fill it out and leave it at the end of the row where you're sitting down right now. Uh, your feedback is very important for us at HEAD, so please fill out those evaluation forms. Uh, now we're ready to start the, uh, uh, we're ready to start, and the title of this uh, presentation is uh, The Co-Curricular Transcript, You Complete Me, Documenting the Total Student Experience. And this presentation will be uh, leaded by Dr. Marva Craig, Vice President for Student Affairs from Borough Manhattan Community College, and Dr. Michael Hutmaker, uh, Dean for Students Affairs from Borough, uh, Borough, um, Borough Community, uh, Manhattan Community College from the CUNY system. So I welcome uh, the speakers to all of you. Good morning. My name is Marva Craig and I serve as the uh, Vice President of Student Affairs. And yes, we're gonna be talking about the co-curricular transcript and showing how it completes a student um, during their stay in the institution. Um, I'll be presenting this morning with Michael uh, Gillespie. Uh, okay. All right. Subliminal messaging, maybe. I don't so, know. I'm Michael Hutmaker, everyone. I, I don't want to present with Michael Gillespie. Michael Let's Gillespie make couldn't make it clear. today. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, what are we going to talk about, Michael? The objectives today. We'll be talking to you so that you'll understand how beneficial the uh, co-curricular transcript is, both to the students and to um, the college as well. We want you to learn step by step the actions that you should take on your campus and give you ideas of the buy-in for the co-curricular transcript. We'll explain how you will develop committees that are re representative of the diversity of your institution and an understanding of the process used by the institution to create the co-curricular transcript. A little bit about BMCC. There are basically four areas of studies with many majors um, there. We have arts and sciences, we have business, we have the education and human services, and we also have the uh, computer and technology, and then the different areas that the students study um, in those areas. BMCC, like most institutions, primarily female, but the, the males, more males are attending right now. We're about 24,500 students with about 10,000 of our students in the continuing education program. And we're a part of the City University of New York. We are four-year and two-year colleges. And as you can see, all the four-year and two-year colleges, at least one CUNY college is in each borough in the uh, city of New York. And we are located downtown, and our neighborhood is called Tribeca. 
We're very happy about the neighborhood we're in. It has grown since we were there. Before, when we moved down, it was just called um, downtown. They renamed it and called it Tribeca. And what does Tribeca mean? It means that there's a triangle below Canal Street. And so they cut off Canal Street, taking the triangle, the rich neighborhood, and now we can't afford to live there anymore. New York has a, ha a habit of renaming neighborhoods using these little acronyms so they can raise the rent. Right. So, so, um, so we love our Tribeca neighborhood. Let's talk a little bit about inside and outside of the classroom and the learning that takes place there and the time that students will spend. I did the math for you. So the time available to learn. If you do, you, you want to explain this one, Michael? Sure. I could do this. All right, 24 hours a day. We all agree on that. Students maybe get six hours of sleep. So we'll, we'll take that. So that leaves about 18 hours a day. Multiply that by seven days a week equals 126 hours of waking time. So we have 14 weeks in a semester, you multiply by the number of hours a week, 1,700 hours in a semester that students are awake, hopefully, okay? Right. So these are waking hours available to learn both inside and outside the classroom and take care of their, their personal uh, affairs as well. Now let's go inside the classroom. Inside the classroom, you have one week a uh, student is about 15 hours, a full-time student, will be about 15 hours or so. If you're on a 14-week semester and your time's up by the 15 hours, we're getting about 210 hours that they're inside the classroom. If you go outside the classroom now, you have one week, about 20, 126 hours. When you do the math, it's 111 hours there. And then if you do the 14 weeks, about 1,554, they are outside the classroom. Now we're going to give a little bit of study time outside of the classroom as well. And we give them about 420. So we are left with 1,134 hours that we are working with. So we did the math, and we recognize that students spend more time outside of the classroom learning than they spend inside of the classroom. So it's up to us as educators to help them use that time and use the time wisely. So <laughs> we encourage participation in the uh, extracurricular experience and we encourage the students to participate because we want them to be prepared to apply for scholarship and document it. We want them to be able to transfer to four-year schools and document they participated and to seek employment and show that they participated beyond what they do in the classroom. Because at BMCC, we look at the holistic growth of the student not only inside, but outside of the classroom. And one way we can do this is by tracking their participation using the co-curricular transcript so that employment, internship, scholarships, and other institutions will see the whole student. So what is the BMCC co-curricular transcript? It is not that every student will have a co-curricular transcript. It is initiated by the student. They have to tell us that they want it. And then we use it to complement the academic transcript. So when you see the co-curricular transcript side by side with the academic transcript, one will say, you're beautiful, and the other one will say, because you showcase my grades, and the other one will say, you're tracking what I'm doing outside of the classroom. And that is the only way we can show that we are engaging the whole student and not just what they're doing in the classroom. 
So how is the BMCC co-curricular track organized? When we were organizing the transcript, we decided to go where the students are, do what they're doing, and organize it about their here and now. So we organized it around six areas that we know the students are doing. And what are the six areas? We know they're in clubs and organizations. We know they're achieving awards. We know that there are some athletes out there. We know that they're doing community service. They're leaders and they're doing workshops and seminars. And that's how we decided to organize our transcript around those. Now, if you're bringing something to a campus that's so new, one of the things you want is buy-in. So you never start with the idea and then go to your boss with the idea. We did not go to our president with our idea. We, we grew it from the ground up in student affairs. And how did we do this? By committees in student affairs, and I'll explain that to you as well. And then we assigned the members of the committees to do different research. Like some we assigned members to do the literature search, some to talk to institutions, some to do the focus group, and some to do the software. And then, of course, we talked ongoing communication. But because of the nature of our committee, and we know that we can't do this ongoing communication, we decided to do a Google group to communicate. So who were the people on this committee? And look at the diversity of, of the different areas in which they work while we're looking at that. So what we did was all these people from student affairs, different areas of student affairs, advisement is academic affairs in our case, and look how they all look like movie stars. You think you're in a show right here, right? But they all played their parts like stars in helping us getting the, um, the transcript off the ground, right? And so, as we, we chatted on our Google, this is just a copy of the page, weekends all the time, people were on it because they were excited about the co-curricular transcript. So now, how did other institutions assist? Because we weren't the first ones. We started calling around, we researched and we looked. Now this is not geographically correct, so please don't tell me at the end that that's not where in the state this college is. We know that already, we just kind of. So we called around to colleges. Not many colleges had one going at the time we were looking at it. So we, but we got much help from the ones who were there already. We even, we decided to call Canada, what the heck, they're just the U.S. almost on another piece of land. I hope there's no one from Canada here. U.S. light. <laughs> right, right, U.S. light. So, so now because we talked to Canada, of course we're going to say we did an international research on, on the co-curricular transcript, right? And we did four and two year. As you can see, it's primarily four year schools because they were the ones doing it more than the two year schools. But we, we knew our culture, so we know what to take from them. So what did we talk to them about? We talked to them about the mission, the, the history, the marketing, and all that. All the things up there, we had these discussion. But we assigned it to each person, and each person must ask these basic questions. You can have additional discussion, but you must ask these basic questions so we'll have the information. And all this time, it's just percolating in student affairs. We didn't move it out. It's us, us because it costs nothing to do research. Because, so, so some of you may say, you spent all that time doing that? What if the college said no? It's rare that a college will say no after you've done so much. Okay? So that's why we were doing it in student affairs. So we asked. How long have you been using the co-curricular transcript? This was about 2009 that we were doing the, using it. And the few schools, look how many of them, it was really new. 
And one, why we cut off at four years? Because we didn't get any over four years when we were talking to them. When we ask, who oversees your co-curricular transcript? Which, which division? Most of them told us, all of them told the student of it. Now, something interesting about this. Because transcript is in the word, okay, academic affairs, don't get all upset. But because there's a word transcript there, academic affairs thinks we own transcript. Therefore, it cannot come out of student affairs. When we decided what we we're going to do, that was one of the contention. Luckily for us, we had done the research. So because we've done the research, it showed there that it was all in student affairs. And that's how we held on to it at BMCC. There was nothing to talk about, because that's how the rest of the country had done it. Then we looked at the sizes of the schools as well to get a feel of what schools were doing. And then we asked if they had leadership courses. And the reason we were asking about the leadership courses was primarily because we eventually, we would like to have some as well, but we will use this as our guide, but not yet. You can't push too fast, too much too fast. And then the, we also wanted to learn about their service learning courses, and we asked about this. But you know, some of the questions, we didn't know what to ask necessarily. But in our research, we found some of our questions. We know what we wanted, but some of the questions we didn't know to ask until we found it in the research. So we wanted to hear the students' voices. So we did a focus group of the students, and they are an interesting bunch, right? Because they're going to give you a lot of information about this, because they're excited about it, yet they do not trust us as much as we think. So let's go to some of the questions we asked them. We asked them if they keep, keep track of their co-curricular participation. And then we also ask them um, if they would like to see these activities tracked by a member of the, the college community. And we also ask them, do you think this CCT would be beneficial? Now, the conflict in the answers, which I'll show you later, came because after we did this survey, it's important that you do the focus group as well, because you can flesh out the inconsistencies in the responses that you receive from the student. And the word that turned them off was tracked. They don't want to be tracked by us. And the mere fact that we used it We'll see later on how they responded to us, and then they explained to us they don't want to be tracked. Even though that's what we're doing, use another word. They don't like that word, right? So we did like their majors to get a feel that we're doing a wide enough cross-section of the college, and liberal arts is high because it's the biggest major, and business is, is also high because it's the biggest major in the students who respond. We asked them if they belonged in like campus organization. They told us yes, and we were looking for those students because they, I, we think they would be the better ones to help us. When we asked them, do you keep track of your co-curricular transcript? 59 said, yeah, two said, 59 said definitely, five said no, two said, eh, somewhat, right? When we asked if they would like us to track it, you see, there's a decrease. And the decrease we understood later was because we used the word tracked. Only one student has ever heard of the co-curricular transcript. But when we explained it to them and asked them if they would like us to have it, they all said yes. They liked the idea of the transcript. So we not only did student focus group, groups, we also talked to our faculty groups as well. We spoke separately to staff, gave them the information, and asked them for feedback. And it was after that that we 
told the cabinet. That's when we shared it with our president. And when they'd seen how much research we'd done, it was like, yes, okay? But before we did that, we also went back to the Senate and the council and informed them of what we were planning to do bef before we moved ahead. And the students, we brought it back to them in a leadership retreat. And in the leadership retreat that we brought it back to them, we actually had um, them telling us, how would you market to, to this co-curricular transcript to the institution? So at the leadership retreat, even before we started it, they were doing, they were assigned this topic, the group that's there, and they were doing the presentation here on how to do marketing. Those are ways in which we got the students' voices. And, and get their input as well, because that's crucial. It's their transcript. So we surveyed non-CUNY schools. Why? Because CUNY schools don't require the co-curricular transcript. So we asked the registrar's office, give us the top 10 schools to which our students tra um, request transcript. Interesting. They gave us the top 10, what is that number nine, we all said. We've never heard of that. Why would our students be going to school? We didn't. So we thought, Ashford? Did we mean Alfred University? Yeah, that's Ashford. And then we asked our teachers, our faculty, can you guess the other three where transcripts are sent? And they guessed three, and some of them guessed two, but no one got number one. And number one was Phoenix, University of Phoenix, and it was a shocker to the campus. So sometimes, when you're asking for information, you're getting other information that's useful to your campus. Because we go back to this Ashford and say, what is this Ashford University? And we researched and we read that, and then we went and we read and we saw what it shared in common with Phoenix. The students wanted more online courses and that's why they were sending transcripts to these places. So that's information that we now use to pass on to academic affairs and say, guess what we found out? And so we, we offer more and we're, we're looking even, I spoke to the provost who was also here and one of the things we're doing is interviewing faculty who are interested in, in, in um, teaching online classes at the college, right? So, we also talked at the transfer fair. When they come, we're a community college. All the four-year schools are coming. So since they're all coming there to ch recruit our students, we evaluate, we, we, we gave them a survey as well and asked them for information. And they gave us some feedback. When we asked them if they're familiar with the co-curricular transcript, they weren't. When we asked them if they've ever received a co-curricular transcript, most of them had not. When we asked them if they would use it, if they received it, and most of them said, very likely. So we knew we were on the right track, right? So we asked them, well, you give scholarships and all that, would you consider it? Very likely they would consider it. And would this official transcript be beneficial? This is us just finding out information because we didn't have enough and we recognized that we weren't alone in not knowing the rest of the country was too as we were, we were doing this and they're responding to us. We did survey some potential employees and we got just about some of the same feedback. So then we started, we went to the college after we informed everyone and we said, can you 
build this system for us. We're ready to build this system. And they said, no, um, CUNY First is coming, which is a university system. And because of that, we cannot build new systems. And when they told us they couldn't, that's when we started looking for a software. And that's when we bumped into different companies. And they, too, provided us with information. And the software company we wound up selecting was OrgSync. And we're happy we selected them because we were one of the first ones. And we had the ongoing fights with them. So because we wanted our transcript to be our way, not their way. And they needed us because they wanted to use our college to push their business as well. So every time I present at the college, I try to make it all inclusive. And I'll tell people who are on the committee, but I always leave the empty chairs there and encourage other people to participate in any way, way they can and, and be inviting with leaving the empty chairs in our presentation. So now that the CCT is on board, Michael will tell you a little bit about, a lot, about how it works. Thanks. And this, if you don't know, is Michael Hutmaker. Okay. Still. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Marva. As you can tell, we did a lot of research. We did a lot of foundation work and preparation. Uh, again, a lot of this information was back from 2009. And so it took about a, almost two years to get all this information, all the buy-in, all the data available to start the process. So once we started the launch, uh, it, we start, launched in, uh, I think, fall 2010 was the first full semester that we had it. So how does the, the we call it the CCT, co-curricular transcript. So, that's how I'll refer to it, just for the tongue twister effect of co-curricular transcript over and over. So as we mentioned, co-curricular transcript is a student-initiated uh, document. So the school has a role to play, but the student has a, a role to play as well. And so we're going to talk about what the school's role is first. So in a nutshell, so we have a submission by a faculty or staff member uh, for a co-curricular event, and they use the online request form, which I'll show you later. It's reviewed by a co-curricular transcript review committee. That, co that committee then makes a decision, and most of the time the decisions are uh, positive, and, this, and the, uh, the event or activity is approved as a co-curricular certified event. And then we notify the applicant, tell them they've been approved most of the time, and then they can move forward with their event. They can inform the students that participate in the activity that they can document this on their co-curricular transcript. In the rare cases when a, app, uh, a request or an application is denied by the committee, uh, we, we have a conversation with the applicant to explain why it's falling short of what we, our standards are for it. Uh, either that it's a very uh, singular in the, the approach is for a very select few of students. It's not open to the whole community of students or it's an event that's uh, outside of the, of the campus and doesn't involve students. So we talk to the faculty or the staff member that is submitting this activity, and we help them work it through so it can become a verified event, certified event. So this is the co-curricular transcript activity verification form. It's done online uh, to help reduce the paperwork and also allows us to communicate as members of the uh, co-curricular review mit uh, committee uh, to share this information so we don't have to pass around notes uh, via paper and all that. So we can have these meetings via emails and online or phone conversations. So in the application process, obviously, you talk about the name of the activity, when it's going to happen, uh, describing the activity. And if you scroll down you know, on the website, if you scroll down further on this application, it talks about learning outcomes, what do you expect the students to get out of it, uh, what the uh, expectations of the participation, how many hours. Sometimes offices uh, have volunteer hours for their office. So if you want to volunteer for the Women's Center, uh, the Women's Center director will submit a request form and say, I will verify that you know, the students will be you know, co-curricular uh, activity if they submit, you know, if they participate in five hours of service to the Women's Center. So it's stuff like that that we have conversations with the directors and staff to include it. And that's what this uh, online form uh, allows us to do. So I talked about the co-curricular transcript review committee. 
And again, just like the other committees we've had regarding this process, it's very inclusive of members of student affairs, academic affairs, as well as faculty and students involved. So obviously the faculty and students, they rotate you know, throughout the years, but the, the, the staff from academic and student affairs are, are pretty consistent uh, of, the, of the membership. So once an activity or an event is approved, it then becomes part of the student, the CCT activity catalog. We all know what the academic catalog is. It's you know, the description of all the courses, all the majors uh, that they have uh, for the students, so they have a description of those courses. We do the same thing for the co-curricular activities. You see it's organized by the six uh, areas, and for each activity, it gives a little blurb of what that activity or event is. So when someone receives a co-curricular transcript, they can refer back to this online uh, catalog and check out what volunteering at the Women's Center means. They just go through the catalog. And we're, right now we have it for the last three years, we're, and we're going to be doing this every couple years now, updating it, because uh, most of the activities are pretty consistent from year to year. Then also, simultaneously, as we're notifying the applicant, uh, the staff member, faculty member, that their event has been approved, it becomes a certified event. And then we, submit the, we provide them with this logo that they can include on their posters, their flyers, their emails, their social media, whatever means of advertising their event is, so students know that if they attend this, it can be uh, included in the co-curricular transcript. And of course, the presenters of these uh, workshops or seminars or events or the offices that provide the service, uh, they notify the students as well as that they can uh, include these on their transcript. So we talked about marketing at the, the, the student leadership retreat. They gave us some ideas. And one thing we found out that Less is more when it comes to advertising, especially when it comes to posters and signage and all that. So we, we got some student input. We got some uh, staff members with some skills in marketing and, and, and uh, print shop software. And we came up with some, some posters and presentations that we put around campus. We keep it short and simple, get involved, getting connected. Uh, also advertising some of our social media outreaches with Twitter and Facebook. And this is a little bit more detailed of what the co-curricular transcript is. This is one of the early versions of the posters uh, because it was brand new. Not all the students knew about it, so we had to get the word out. And then as we grew, we got into our second year, we started getting students that were uh, providing uh, their applications, submitting them in. So we started using faces, real faces, real students on these posters. And then they talk about why they uh, sort of their co-curricular transcript, what their goals are, going to Pace, going to MIT, starting a business. And it was just a way to put real faces to real uh, transcripts. And we, we felt it was really good to, to do that. And also, we also used students as ambassadors to the co-curricular transcript. We had tabling done throughout campus, information. Some of you, you should all have, if you haven't received some uh, handouts about the co-curricular transcript, we had those at tables. We had student ambassadors at tables. Uh, talking about the co-curricular co transcript. And these are some of the other marketing material we used at those tables, because it's a little more detail-oriented. While students are talking, the, the, the ambassadors can refer to these posters and explain what the co-curricular transcript is and how it can benefit them for scholarships, for transferring, to applying for jobs. So, that's, so that's the, that was the school's role in the, in the co-curricular transcript. Now, back to the nutshell. The student's role Students' role is a little bit easier because all they have to do, they start with participating in the activity. So if it's a service event, if it's a workshop, it's, if, it, if it's a, a club or a leadership position, committees on campus, that activity and participation is documented, either a sign-in sheet, a swipe system, uh, the speaker, if it's a workshop, we have the, the, the speakers do a sign-in sheet. If it's working or volunteering, we have the coordinators uh, coordinate, make sure everyone's signed in that they did participate. So document their participation is documented. So then the student, well, after they complete participating in the event, they go online uh, to our web-based uh, co-curricular transcript software, um, and they update their account. They put in all the activities that they participated in. And that is sent to our staff member in student affairs who verifies that the student participated. They go back to uh, the activities, well, once activities happen, uh, they're submitted back to student affairs and the staff member 
uh, keeps, keeps a file of all the different activities that happen on campus. So the, the, the event is verified by the member of student affairs. And then if it's ac accurate, if you know, John Doe is participating in these activities, they're verified and they update John Doe's co-curricular transcript. And it's all online. So at that point, the student can request the, their, their co-curricular transcript. They go online, there's a request form for their co-curricular transcript, and it goes back to the same staff member. And once the staff member receives that, they print it, and it's signed by the Chief Student Affairs Officer. Most of the time it's uh, Vice President Craig, but one of the few chances she's not on campus, I, I will sign it as well. And then we, you know, we contact the student that their CCT is ready for pickup, and if, if they need assistance mailing it out to a school or for a scholarship, we will assist them with that as well. So some of the resources we provide for the students about the co-curricular transcript, it's not just for students, it's primarily for them, but we also have it for faculty and staff. So is our website. So this is a screenshot of our website. And you can see we, the, the different fields we have on the left. Getting started is actually how a student goes on and creates their, their account uh, through OrgSync, through BMCC for the co-curricular transcript. And then the requesting of their, uh, the request form that students have. Uh, FAQs was interesting because when we started the program, students were always coming to the office asking, what do I do, how do I do this, can I do this, can I do that? So, so we, we included a list of the basic FAQs uh, on the website to, to uh, provide that for the students. And then a list of resources. Uh, so some of the brochures that we have handed out, so I'll show you some more that we have on, up, up on the screen. And of course, I referred back uh, the activity submission form, which I showed you earlier, is also available. So this is one of the resources. I believe most of you receive these. This is a quick user guide, and it's both for students and faculty. Uh, it's just a, the real quick version of how to log in, how to generate uh, an account, how to submit activities, and then for the faculty, how to have your, fac uh, your event or uh, activity submitted and be part of the co-curricular activity catalog. And then also for the students, we have a uh, co-curricular transcript involvement log, just to help them keep keep track, as we saw the surveys, that they do keep track of their activities. And th this, this is another way to help them keep track of it so they can go back and find out what date they participated in a service event or went, attended a workshop. So the student, uh, we talked about how the student attends the event, the event is, their, their participation is documented. Then they go online and submit. So the students will submit their activities online. And then it's verified by the staff member. Some activities may not be verified because they didn't happen on campus. They may be participating in service through their church or uh, volunteering in the community. And because it's not verified through the, the, the co-curricular transcript committee and it's not sanctioned by the school, we, we support it, absolutely. But that's something they can keep on their resume. This is, these are activities that happen through BMCC. So the activities that are uh, approved already, they're officially on the transcript. The other activities are not. And we bring the student in and ex we explain why certain activities are or are not on the, the transcript. And if there's activities that are not, we talk to the student and see how we can make them part of the co-curricular uh, transcript and be verified. So once that's all done, they hit the submission, they put the request in for a form, and this is what they get. They get a, they get a sample. Uh, we have some samples here. We'll pass them around. I want to take them that way. There we go. So if you, if you notice, the, the transcript is organized in the, uh, the different categories that we have on the co-curricular transcript. And on the back side is the description of what the co-curricular transcript is. Because when uh, schools are receiving it or uh, committees on scholarship, re affording scholarships, um, they, they can understand what this transcript is, what this document is, and it helps explain their activities that they participated in on campus. One thing we want to do is also make sure that the co-curricular transcript, we talked about how we saw the co-curricular and academic transcript talking to each other earlier. They walked up and started to say how lovely they were to each other, how beautiful they were. Um, the, the academic transcript and the co-curricular transcript are mirror images of each other. The academic transcript is a blue background with an orange border. And the co-curricular transcript is orange background with blue border. This is so we keep it in the family of, of the colors of the school. Um, 
So, so this is what it looks like. And, you, and it's also it's signed. You can see the signature of Vice President Craig down there on the bottom. And also it's sealed, stamped with the seal of the, of the college. For those of you, we have a few that are handed around so you can pass them around. We, they're stamped so you can feel the uh, embossed, um, the stamp of the, of the signature of the, of the college. So we have all of these, all this information. We started the program, like I said, we officially started <coughs> marketing it and getting students involved. Uh, in, in 2010. So we've only been doing it for about uh, two years now. So our first cohort of students are starting to come through and, and really submit their requests for their transcripts. So how, of course, assessing and improving. So you know, the way we're going to be doing this is seeing how many students request to be placed on a transcript, how much information they want on the transcript, the different types of activities, uh, the numbers of transcripts requested by the students to be sent out. Uh, and also satisfaction that you have with the software and the process. So anywhere we can speed it up, make it more uh, efficient and easier for the students to use, we want to do it and use technology to help do that. Um, also, one other thing, the students do have the capability of printing unofficial transcripts. We don't know how many of those are printed, but it helps, you know, if they're using it to help either fill out applications or build their resumes, uh, that, that's great, but we also, you know, want them to use the, the official stamped and signed version to send out as well. So, and as we grow with the program, we're going to find out other areas to assess and, and to see how we can keep continuing improving the program. So, who are you going to call? You're going to call BMCC. For the last couple of years, we've had uh, numerous schools from around the country, two-year, four-year, private, public, uh, calling us about you know, how are we doing it? How do we do it? How do you start it? Why did you get started with the co-curricular transcript? So they've contacted us. We've sat down and have uh, phone conversations. Uh, unfortunately, these weren't, you know, they're not site visits. You know, you know going to California, Florida might have been nice in, you know, the colder months for us. But, you know, we had these phone conversations uh, with these schools and really, you know, got them on board on, on the reasons why we implemented the vendors we used, why we chose who we did, and, and such. So who else is going to use BMCC? Our vendor has even, you know, Vice President also mentioned that you know, we started early with uh, the, our vendor, and they were starting the process too. So we were very adamant about the way we wanted our transcript to look, and they had their own set style. It was very cookie cutter, very plain. So what we, you know, we had these long conversations with them, and, and they've even taken a lot of our recommendations and suggestions, and, and we're, we're an example on their website. Uh, of the co-curricular transcript, just for other schools to use. They always come back to us because we were one of the original schools that they partnered with uh, to develop this program. And finally, who else is going to call us? Google. Now, why do you say Google? Well, how does that mean? So if you type in co-curricular transcript, first school you see is BMCC. And it's not alphabetically. I checked. There are schools underneath us that are alphabetically out of order. So. Uh, you have University of Texas, and then you have Purdue, so it's not alphabetical. So, uh, so we're, we're happy that you know, we, we are the first thing that pops up when you type in co-curricular transcript, so feel free to, to do it if you have any questions about how, how we've done it and see our website. So now I'm going to pass it back to Vice President Craig. So Who, let's do the, a quick summary of what the co-curricular transcript is all about. It's a holistic approach, and we are promoting the personal and professional development of students. It's educational also. It helps the students as they transfer to four-year colleges. Leadership, because as we create leaders, we also want them to know that it means something to us by documenting it. And it's a professional document. It provides opportunities for internships, and of course, they can use it for scholarship as well. So as you can see there, the co-curricular transcript helps. It helps our students. It's hel it helps us for our students to understand the, uh, the many things that they can do outside of the classroom. And I always have to give special thanks to the people who have worked so hard on this um, with us in developing uh, the co-curricular transcript, right? So 
Okay, so this is where you will get your pop quiz. We want to know who were, who were the people listening, who were the people on the iPad, who were the people... Okay, but before we do that, from Berkeley College, Jairo Borja, are you here? Please come up. You're coming up. I did see you on your, 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 but I will still excuse you. And I will give you an umbrella in appreciation for you not only coming early, but you were the person seated closest to the front when it started and you did not leave. We appreciate that. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The rest of you, Dean Wong, just kind of face front there so we can see. You're going to play for the lovely BMCC paperweight, or you can play for the wooden BMCC mirror, and it is, is this, oh, oh, hold on, let me make sure. Ah. Uh, it's even magnified for the oldies but goodies. <laughs> or a flash drive with BMCC on it. Of course, it's in leather case. Or you can also play for the BMCC umbrella with the BMCC name embossed on both sides. And these are all made courtesy of China. Thank you. <laughs> So, so now we'll start. Oh, well, hold on, hold on. Everyone knows the rules, right? Oh, yeah. We... Jeopardy? Answer in the <laughs> form of a question. Okay. Okay. Ready. Are we ready? Okay. We're paying, playing for the paperweight. Okay. We've put it in the blue BMCC bag. Tribeca. This is what Tribeca stands for. Your hands up. Ah, the lady, I, I can't see. The male right there, please stand. What's your response? Um, no, you got it, it's wrong. Oh, what is Would you give a student a second chance? <laughs> okay, well go ahead. And what is your name? Marty Henderson. Where Queensborough Community College. You better display it <laughs> in your office. You better. I am coming there to make sure you display it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And now for the hand mirror. The word students did not like when surveyed. Who? Choose. Gentleman right there? Okay. What is tract? Oh, sir, lovely mirror. For you answered it well, a lovely mirror. You can use it when you're trimming your beard. <laughs> <laughs> and your name? Uh, Dave Dean from Washington State. Thank you. Oh, Congratulations. Thank you. The next one is one of the six categories you, BMCC uses on the, okay. Who, gentleman with glasses? Yes, we can't see from here because the light is. What is your answer? All right. Only one. <laughs> Excellent. Oh no, she's playing for the the flash drive. Okay, please. <laughs> You can keep all those notes you were about to tell us on that flash drive. And what's your name? Myra Smith from Springfield Technical Community College, Springfield, Massachusetts. Okay. 
and the person that's playing for the umbrella. Hopefully you won't need it today. The question is, this is one purpose for which the CCT may be used. Way in the back. Way in the back? Mm, Who's that? It's Nadine. Nadine? No, oh, sit down, no. Nadine. Sit, sit, sit down. I, I will give you one when we get back to campus. <laughs> Okay, who else? Right Just here, choose right someone. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, your, what's your answer? What is, what is transfer? Oh, what is transfer? And which institution are you from? Queensborough Community College. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Make that of that. And you, you're going to walk with it in pride and twirl it so they see BMCC on both sides, okay? And take that gentleman with you right. when you're walking with the umbrella, okay? Thank you very much. If you have any questions, do you have any questions for us? I wouldn't have any either. I saw the sun outside, <laughs> so I don't blame you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you being here. Uh, I think we had a great time with uh, uh, the people here, that were, uh, the presenters. So I would like to thank them again for the excellent presentation and the, uh, the tools that they are using at their institution that I know that we will be looking at in detail to see how we can implement them in each one of our institutions. Uh, now we're going to have our lunch break. We'll reconvene at 1.30. Uh, remember that there has been a, a couple of changes in, in a couple of the rooms. If you don't recall which they are, uh, ask at the, at the registration desk for the uh, new uh, session rooms. Well, have a great lunch and we'll see you this afternoon. Thank you. Everyone will be available for questions. I have my business card if you like, and I'll also put up uh, our contact information if you want to write it down and email us, ask us any questions about the process of the co curricular transcript. So thank you for attending. And have a great rest of the conference.